Hello and greetings fellow StarCrafters, PGL Milncraft here with Game 2 between July Zerg, the blue Zerg player right here as you can tell from his name, and Mouse Mana, the red Protoss player here. This is going to be on GSL Crossfire, which I know everyone's already made this joke already, but out of, for those of you who haven't seen the commercial for Crossfire, go watch it, it's absolutely hilarious. And I can say without a doubt that when you buy one, it actually happens, little people fly down on discs and then you start fighting each other, and then when you lose, you get sucked into an alternate dimension, have to pay the eternal price. And also, that game is a lot of fun. I don't know, for those of you who didn't play it, like, you just put little rock, you put little, like, metal pebbles in, and then there's these three shapes, and you try to shoot the shapes so that you can put them in your opponent's, uh, you shoot the shapes so you can put them in your opponent's little bin, I guess, on the side, and, I mean, it's not super exciting, but you know what, it was a lot of fun when we were a kid, it's, it really takes me back to the 90s, uh, you know, a simpler time for many, really, anyway, uh, this map, this map is another one of the first line of GSL maps that came out, it was Crossfire, which is this map, obviously, Terminus RE, and I'm blanking on the third name, Crevice, Crevice which is uh, a big map as well. And then there was Taldarim Altar as well, which came out about the same time. It was, you know, right in the early stages before the ladder pool had really been updated, so like Steps of War and really small maps were kind of the norm. And so the GSO wanted to try to improve that by, you know, adding adding maps that encourage more of a macroeconomic style play, which this map isn't super economical, fo uh, super macroeconomical focused, I guess. Is the way we will say it. It's 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 a it is a kind of a bigger well it's it's a tall map certainly, but it's not that wide, and it's got these really tight crevices actually, these really tight corners which actually favor Protoss players and Terran players, because you're able to I mean you force field your opponent and prevent their units from being able to fight. You can stop flanks from happening, although of course they can go around and try to like go around and attack you. And then these two watchtowers you could just sit on and prevent your opponent from moving out at all, especially as a Terran player, like siege tanks on the watchtowers and here. It's it's almost impossible to remove a Terran player when they're sieged up in these little tight areas. Like, it's very, very difficult. You really need a very good timed attack with a lot of Zerglings and a lot of Mutalists that are well aimed and just a lot of, you know, basically more units. Of course, we don't have a Terran player in this match. I will say that this uh, this match more than most, this map more than most, encourages one base timing pushes. We see that one of the Zergs here needs to go to therapy. He got a little tased. He's still healing emotionally as well as physically from the damage that was dealt to him. But I'm sure he's gonna. I'm sure he's gonna feel better. We also see the probe is gonna go ahead and hide here so that the Zerglings don't see him. But they do spot him, and they're going to chase him down. He's going to go ahead and try to slide through there and try to possibly block the hatchery. No. Oh, nope, he's able to get the hatchery down, and that probe goes down as well. Poor probe died for a cause he didn't have anything to do with. You saw that July pulled the drones off of gas exactly when it got to 100 so they could start the metabolic boost. But as I was saying, it really encouraged one base pushes, or one base or two base pushes because you're able to kind of just force all of your opponent's forces into one area. So if you have a lot more forces than them, it's very difficult to be taken advantage of or to be delayed too much. That's more of a case with a Terran Siege Banshee one base all in. It's less, less kind of the case here. Protoss players, I've never really seen a Protoss player do a very successful all in, except for maybe Blink Stalkers, which tend not to be really all ins. Sorry about that, a little bit of technical difficulties. Which really needs to be all ins because you're able to expand behind it with blink stalkers. It's not that big of a commitment in terms of you know getting all your forces down and so on. And it really encourages you to expand too because blink stalkers are so mobile that they're able to go ahead and just. We'll see if my computer finally got fixed. It shouldn't be lagging right now. I'm not sure what's going on. And these little zerglings are going to go ahead and hold the watchtowers, make sure units don't come in. But as I was saying, uh, blink suckers are very mobile too, so you're able to defend your expansion. So it actually encourages you expanding more, as opposed to any sort of uh, one base all in. But it is a kind of an early aggressive strategy that you can do as a Protoss player. It works best on two base, I would say, where you get six gateways and do a kind of a MC quasi style push. But instead, uh, with blink stalkers, of course. 
You just see the pawn coming out here. That's almost always a sign that the Protoss player is going to expand. It blocks off the Zerglings from being able to run this way. They have to go around the pylon. Just a little bit of a block off so you can force field better, easier, able to defend. Stop them from running by and going into your expansion. Little Zerglings are going to go ahead and poke in here. They want to make sure that the Protoss player is expanding. That he's not doing any sort of four gate and trying to fix, fool his opponent. And in fact, we do see only three gateways right here. And actually, Warp Gate's going to finish. Oh, it's 15 seconds away still. It looks like it's almost done, but I guess that's because it takes 160 seconds. One of the longest research times in the game. One of the few things that's only longer, that's almost as long as Stim now. Stim, of course, which is 170 in game seconds, which takes just absolutely forever. Like, I hate waiting for my Stim to finish. I'm sure Protoss players hate waiting, waiting for their Warp Gate to finish, because, of course, Warp Gate is actually more vital to, to them than Stim is. Because... Uh, because it makes all their units faster, it gives them more mobility, he's able to squash that Zergling, teach him a lesson, possibly able to squash him too. Oh, nobody's going to run away. July Zerg, ever vigilant, per careful, watching over his Zerglings. We do see he's getting eight more Zerglings, I think these are defensive at this point, same with the Roche Warren, he hasn't gotten any Roaches yet, he just seems to be macroing up right now, trying to get up on the Harvester count, and actually, uh, he's... Oh, ahead of his opponent by about 10 harvesters right now but the zerg players expansion went up sooner and also zerg players tend to jump ahead and then get slowly made up over time you know as they spend all of the larva on drones at once all their larva injects on drones meanwhile the Protoss player just keeps building chrono boosted probes throughout that time you know so it all it all tends to even out in the end we do see hallucination again it's basically the same build from it actually is the same build from Must Man. I, I guess he figures... I said Must Mana a couple of times, didn't I? Forgive me whenever I say Must Mana. I do mean Must Mana. Different players, of course. And we see uh, pretty much the same build. He figures if, it's, if it works, stick with it. Looks like July Zerg doesn't want to get caught behind an expansion. He's going to go ahead and expand here. Sometimes Zerg players like to go ahead and just take the gold. And, you know, force their opponent to come and, and get at them, actually. But it looks like he's not going to do that. He's going to play it safe. Of course, he might be taking the gold later, and I wouldn't put it past him. We also see that July Zerg is going for pretty much the same build as well. He is just getting his first evolution chamber now. These Zerg is going to go ahead and walk forward and uh, and try to deal some damage here. But too good of a wall off. There's only one little corner here that they can fit through, and there's all these units to deal with them when they do. So it would not be a wise idea to try to do a run by in this situation. We also see Hydralis Den. Hydralisk range, roach, uh, roach speed, and an evolution chamber, which I'm sure is going to get melee, or which I'm sure is going to get missile attack upgrades. Yep, there it is. It looks like he's doing almost the exact same build as well. So it's a very similar game to game, to the game one actually. Although of course this map is different. This map, it's a lot. You know, in the other map. July Zerg basically got trapped into doing a three base on three base, whereas possibly in this game he's able to deal a little bit more harassment. You see another changeling getting zapped there. The stalker is being careful, making sure that no changelings go ahead and go flying around. And actually, I don't. Uh, there's the overseer. Overseer got hit a couple of times, but he's okay. He's got one armor. He's going to heal up. He's going to regenerate energy. It'll be all right. I'm sure it'll be, I'll be doing great. We do see a robo into robotics robo facility into robotics bay. And a little bit of a push for most mana. Uh, I'm not sure how far this push is going to go. He might just be clearing the Zergling out. Ooh, but we do have six Roaches here. Uh, that's not really enough to deal that much damage to a force like this. Possibly with the Zerglings, you could deal a little bit of damage. Maybe couple, get a couple of centuries. But probably not a trade that July Zerg would like to make at this time. However, Mouse Mana wants to make sure he doesn't get flanked. So he's going to go ahead and back off. He just wanted to put a little bit of pressure on his opponent. We do see... Oh, excuse me. We do see nine drones coming in, which shows that... July Zerg's trying to stay ahead of his macro, and actually he's been ahead of his opponent on Harvesters. Of course, since he has more bases as well, it's actually better that he's ahead on Harvesters. We do see that he believe his opponent is saturated, most mana is in fact oversaturated on both of his bases. He's not super oversaturated. Uh, for those of you who know, so there's uh, seven mineral patches here, which means that you want... 14, so this many probes, ending at this probe would be the last probe, 14 probes for the maximum efficiency per worker, per worker efficiency. Anything beyond that increases the amount of minerals you get per second, but only by a little bit. It only increases it um, 
I mean, it, it only increases by about, I think, a bit. Workers are about 50% efficiency. And I was, I was talking about the gold. We see that the gold is taken. And that Phoenix is going to go ahead and fly over it. And he's going to see that not only is there a, well, he already saw the third base, but he saw the fourth base as well. This is probably going to prompt him to move out, which is why Jalizerg, Jalizerg knows that. He's going to get seven, 17 roaches to be able to deal with this. 17 weapons upgraded roaches. He should probably be start to get weapons level 2. Oh, nope, he's saving his money for corruptors. That's what he's doing. He's saving as much gas as he can to be able to take out these Colossus. He knows that last time the Colossus were able to do a lot of damage because he never was able to get the critical threshold of corruptors to be able to deal with them. And he wants to get corruptors, of course, er out early enough that there you go, that hopefully their corruption is uh, on, uh, on the, the countdown or cooldown, the cooldown, which starts which starts already clocked uh, go ahead and ends before he attacks. Now, I don't think Jalizerg wants to engage here, but he might not really... He's kind of caught out of position. Or maybe he's trying to flank his opponent. If he got a flank on, that would be quite effective against his opponent because it's harder to force field, obviously. It's harder to force field both directions at once. But it looks like he's just going to go ahead and go around. Meanwhile... Mouse Mana is going to go ahead and just take the Watchtower. He might just be trying to sack this expansion right away. In fact, that's what he's going to do. So that actually makes sense why Jalizerg's units were up there. I wanted to defend this expansion. We're going to go ahead. We do see the Force Fields are making all a bunch of these roaches in the back bounce around. The Corruptors are going to be able to move in. They don't have Corruption, but they still deal 22 damage per hit. 20 damage per hit. 22 with an upgrade. Able to take out First Colossus. Second Colossus. But look at all that damage that the Colossus have already done, as well as the great force fields. We're able to make sure that all the Stalkers are firing at, at the at Zerg's, at July Zerg's units. But that none of them were able to fire back, and now all the Stalkers can be able to fire at these, uh, these Corruptors and deal with a bunch of them so that he's able to get Colossus again. He's got a lot more units coming out. Not quite enough to deal with it, but in combination with the Broodlings coming out from the destroyed hatchery, he's going to go ahead and engage. That's a wise decision. You should move the Corruptors out of there, though. He wants to make sure that the Corruptors are not going to be able to take for pot shots at. They're on the same hotkey, which is why I think that they're going together. And the Zerglings are actually able to take some little nipping at the heels of these Stalkers and able to deal some damage. Then we, meanwhile, the reinforcements of the Protoss player from Mouse Mana are able to move forward, deal a lot more damage. But July Zerg's Roaches keep moving forward, keep dealing... Uh, the little acid shots at the stalkers. However, that Colossus is probably going to make him disengage. And in fact, he is. He's going to go ahead and move back. We see a little probe hiding over here. He's almost certainly going to be taken out by these roaches. Goodbye, sir. You are not welcome here. Meanwhile, meanwhile, we see five cannons going down to defend this expansion, as well as the Protoss army, which is moving over to meet July Zerg's counterattack which is going to go ahead and sit there and heal. We do see most mana on a third base, which means uh, now that it's it's not quite saturated yet. But once it gets saturated, he'll be about even footing economically, which of course is bad for the Zerg players. I mentioned previously how the Zerg wants to stay ahead on expansions. Of course, July knows that, so that's exactly what he's doing. So that's why he's getting his gold expansion, which we see which is going up right now. And when the Harvester count, we see the Harvester count is roughly the same. A Zerg, you don't necessarily really want to go that far above Wow, look at that supply discrepancy, though. Like, a, a small supply discrepancy is normal, but not one of 70. It looks like July is a lot farther ahead than I thought. Able to deal a lot of damage to the probes there, and he actually might just be able to snipe that Nexus. That's going to be a huge blow to Mouse Mana. Mouse Mana is going to be really far behind in this game, and in fact, he is able to take it out. He probably should take out the probe, too, to make it a little bit more difficult to rebuild his expansion, but it's, it's probably not going to matter. Jalizer is going to go ahead. He decided that it's time, and he's going to go ahead and try to deal as much damage as possible. Now that Tunnel Claws is done, the Force Fields are much less effective. He's able to just claw forward. Uh, the Corruptors are able to move forward and just deal with the Colossus almost immediately, and even with Blink, the Sockers are not going to be able to macro manage it micro manage that effectiveness very uh, very well because the roaches are able to move forward with their enhanced speed and their two weapons attacks which are able to deal so much damage and go ahead and just deal a crippling blow to mouse mana and I see mouse mana GGing out of this game there's no way he can replenish his force as fast as the zerg player is look at July zerg's resources he has so many and he has tons and tons of units streaming down uh, we see here here eight more roaches on the way he's got weapons level two his opponents only at weapons level one uh, although armor one but as I said previously for the purpose of roaches armor is less effective you have to get two armor upgrades to cancel out one of their weapons upgrades but so that was a very interesting game July Zerg 
very similar build from last game, but he was able to just get the right units at the right time, engage the Protoss player. He lost the gold base, but he was able to retake it, and it ended up not mattering because he didn't even have any resources over here. But it was just a trippy game. I really enjoyed watching it, and we're going to go ahead and move on to game three. This is PGL Millencraft signing off.